another evening of Beyond the Forge Wall. I'm Kim Tobin Lale, and this is Philip Lale. Hello. <laughs> We're the co artistic directors of Fourth Wall Theater Company. And tonight our guests are the are you co artistic directors, artistic directors? Yeah, same kind of thing, right? Okay, good. But for a very, very long time compared to us, Tamarie Cooper and Jason Nodler. Thanks and welcome to the show. Yay. Thanks, Thanks for, having for having us. us. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So we are very excited. We've made our way through a lot of artistic directors in town, which has been just a real joy for us. Um, and uh, <laughs> it sounds kind of funny, but we won't go there. The show. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> that wouldn't be very COVID appropriate of us. <laughs> Um, so, but we wanted to talk to you a little bit about what you've been going, what you've been doing. We know that we've watched a lot of what you've done. Unfortunately, we didn't, we weren't in Houston for a while when uh, Drama Squad was going on, which was one of my very most favorite things that you've done. I thought it was beautiful, exciting theater. Um, but tell us a little bit about, you know, what you've done this year, because I think you've done so many amazing things and you've been a little bit ahead of the curve of everybody else, which I've really admired. And um, so fill us in a little bit. Tell us what you want to share with us about this last season and how it's gone and what's coming up. Jason, you want to talk about what we first did when we started, like finding the stuff we could present from our archives? Look, I'm prompting him. Oh, yes, yeah, go. sure. Um, while we were trying to plan a season under the new circumstances, because it, it really wasn't an option to us to not perform, we were trying to find some way to do that. We didn't know how long this would last and didn't expect it to last this long and, and didn't want to go as much as a year without um, some kind of artistic outlet um, for, our, for our company members and for our audience and, and whatever. Um, so while we were working on that, we, we, we put up a few uh, past productions that <clears throat> we didn't have trouble getting the rights to because they were written by playwrights that we were very close with or there were world, world premieres that we had developed in house. Um, there was one that had an equity actor in it. So that made it uh, more expensive, rightly so. And <clears throat> so we couldn't afford to run it for too long. We had to be on another platform, but we co-presented that with the Cinema Arts Society. Um, and, and we put something like seven or eight shows up while we were planning the rest of the year. Tamri, do you want to speak to uh, what we've done since then? Sure. So um, <laughs> while we were doing that, I, I knew that we would transition my summer musical thing um, to virtual. I called my writing partner and I was like, okay, this is what we got to do. And um, he's been like, he's done writing with Second City and people like that. So he's, he's very good at uh, spontaneous thinking and... Um, we were able to salvage probably about a third of the, the script that we had for a live production, but then we just went through it and, and did it for the idea of film. Now, I will say that, again, we are very fortunate as a company because we have friends and board members who are filmmakers. Yeah. So they were willing to put in all of the wonderful time and work with us and that got their crew to work with us because the project sounded fun. They were much more exciting than some of the more like um, corporate sort of gigs they might get. And um, they did it for us at a, certainly a discounted rate. Everyone was still paid, but it was more on a theater sort of budget versus what a corporate film budget sure, would be. Sure. Yeah. So that was amazing. And I have to just shout him out by name, Tim Thompson, who yes. works at Staging Productions. And you guys know him. Philip, you're yes. old with him, I think. Fantastic. Back at stages and stuff, because Tim does sound design and video design and all kinds of things. So Tim is the mensch of my life at this point. Like <laughs> I love him to pieces anyway, but he really helped us out. So we were able to transition my show that way. Mm -hmm. And it was really crazy just having... 15 actors and telling them, you know, here's what you do with your phone and how you set it up. And we did have some group shots that we would film, like we'd all outside and masked and or stuff yeah. in the studios and just, you know, a lot of health and safety precautions, obviously, too. But um, it was fun. I, we did two like that. And I think the second one, we were a little bit more in the rhythm of it, the holiday one I did. Um, but the thing, like you said, that earlier when we were talking that um, I've been really happy with was the drama squad idea. And that came to me um, while I was talking oh, to Jason. I know something's happening on the screen. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was talking to Jason. I said, I just had this idea of like, we should just take theater to people like the way they did in Elizabethan times when the plagues yeah. were happening. And you just, you know, you had to go do it. So you went through the countryside with your wagons. And then Jason <laughs> was like, we should build wagons. <laughs> 
I was like, we're never going to get anywhere in wagons. So we, we didn't build wagons. <laughs> we went in cars, but it, it's, it's essentially two squads of six performers each. Yeah. And we go to people's houses and perform in their yards and driveways and patios. And um, again, there's lots of contracts people have to sign. There's, you know, everyone's masked, including us. And yeah. um, if you can do it, you can do it. Um, and there are more than 10 attendees yeah, sure, and they all have to be masked and socially distanced and all of that. And like, obviously was, health and safety is more important than anything else. Yes. What, what's the material that the drama squad does? Can you give us, a, can you give me some sort of idea? Cause I haven't been, I haven't yeah. had the, uh, you know. We yeah, did. People went and loved it. Yeah, I've, I've yeah. heard that people all love it, but I have no idea, you know, what, what, what's the play? What's the material? What's the, what do you do? I didn't want it to just be the Tamri Cooper show in a wagon, right? Like I, I thought it would be better if it wasn't that. And um, it was also, I realized a great opportunity for some of our catastrophic artists to develop content. We're huge about creating new work with catastrophic. Uh, in our DNA, in my VP, that's one of our main, you know, uh. missions. Um, and so this presented a platform for a bunch of different people to bring their special talents to the table. So you do have some theatrical sketches, um, mm -hmm. some are serious, some are comedic, but then you also have juggling and <laughs> magic shows. Right. And uh, awesome. I actually have a huge background in dance. So I've had, I've had the opportunity to just choreograph some dance pieces, which is mm -hmm. fun. Um, and yeah, just all kinds of different things. This, we're doing it again. We've just okay. launched it and we have uh, round two of Drama Squad with all new material. Okay. And that's in um it starts <laughs> it starts next weekend <laughs> all right <laughs> uh, it starts a week after our gala our yeah. annual fundraiser yeah, yeah. the the um shake your money maker booty yeah. bash power outer power hour which um is saturday night and and yeah. it's actually um it's open to everyone it's mm -hmm. it's free we're we're sending out the access links and they're on our social media um oh, thank you uh yeah. We, um, we want everybody to be able to experience it because uh, our artists have put a lot of work into it and um, we, we don't want it just to be for the people who can pay. Oh, that's so great. We are just rambling at you, but um, I do no, want to good. talk about the other thing that we um, have coming up after Drama Squad. Um, and Jason, if you want to talk about that, that's Candace DeMesa's 30 Ways to Get Free. Oh, I'm, yeah, that sounds great. I'm excited about that piece she's been writing. I've heard a lot of, a lot of wonderful things about it. Yeah, we're very excited about it too. This is actually our second proper film that we've made during the pandemic. The first one was um, about a 15 minute short that uh, Greg Dean has been developing for about 10 years out of a, a Heiner Mueller piece. And um, it's called Hertzstuck. And um, it's still on YouTube and it's free to view and it's hilarious. It's kind of like Laurel and Hardy meet David Cronenberg. <laughs> um, and it's it's very funny. It's strangely moving, and that one's still up. It's about fifteen minutes long, I think. And then yeah, uh, got that. It is beautiful, actually. Tim again shot that, um, yeah. and it's just a uh, yeah, a lovely, weird, disturbing, and hilarious fifteen minutes. So, so now we're on to thirty ways to get free. Which um, uh, Tamri read a microplay by Candace, which had been published in a in a journal of some sort. Um, but they accidentally published like four of them and she hadn't meant to have that happen. Tamri read all four of them and she forwarded them to me and we both were freaking out about how great they were. And we told her and she said, I'm so embarrassed that you read the other ones. You know, she hadn't intended those for public consumption, but, but we just, we were so excited by them and, and she's such a good writer. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> when you find a, a relatively young writer who um, is new to it and is doing such wonderful work. And she's just really on fire. And we really wanted to make a film with her. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've been involved with Candace for a long time. I think yeah. going back to 2013 or 2014. 2013. Uh, as, as an actor, I mean, she's an, yeah. a, a wonderful actor and it turns out she's a wonderful writer as well. Um, I guess I can also tease the fact that we have commissioned a full length play from her, which oh, good. We, we hope will happen uh, by the end of this coming season. But if, if it doesn't, it'll be early in the following. That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that because I just think she's a super talent and I'm so glad that we have her here. And 
that you guys have found, uh, you know, the inspiration to help her find a place to, and I think you're a perfect fit for her, that she has a place there that you're going to help her develop a full length play there. I think that's amazing. I'm so glad. Um, I've always, I knew when I met her, she was a huge talent. I just, there's just certain people you just feel it. And I think speaking of another huge talent that came through you all that just won a drama desk award for an Ozark episode is our, uh, uh, is Mickey and Emmy yeah. is Mickey. Uh, yeah. Another huge actor talent turned writer that has gone off and made a big name for herself and seems to be doing quite well. So very exciting. Looks like you guys have a, huge history of jumping off. Well, we also know Jim Parsons came through you too. So, you know, this is all exciting. Look at you guys. It's like, that's exciting to me, but yeah. So w let's go back a little bit. Cause we, we went bam, bam, bam through all this stuff. <laughs> and so, so I want people who are watching to know that um, there, you have this, you have the, your shake your booty thing is coming up this Saturday. Right? Your money <laughs> your maker. Money maker. Same you same thing. Right? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. But, and I, and I want to make sure people know, like, how, if I wanted to go to that, how would I do it? Um, there, well, I don't have the link in my head, but um, we have it on our website and on our, all our social media posts. And it's a simple Vimeo link. Um, look at that. Your yeah. marketing person is <laughs> bomb. Chat. Oh, there it That's is. what I was kind yeah. of hoping would That's happen. What we're, come on, Catherine. There's Put a link there. if you're that watching awesome. this. You um, want Oh, shake your money maker. There's shake your link. money maker. Yeah. So um, it we have successfully had a, a great group of underwriters come together so we can present this to you as well. And it's, you know, we, we every year we have a gala. You guys. Yeah. Too. Um, and this year was like, OK, well, it's going to be virtual. So yeah, we um, skipped our last one. I mean, we were just yeah. about to hold it when this yeah, all yeah. broke out. So we're on to a, a year later. We really felt like we had to do one. I think that's great. It, it's a fun mixture of um, some live in studio silliness that I'm hosting with um, Mortando the Clown. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. It's one of Greg Dean's alter egos. Yeah. It's very yeah. disturbing. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> so he, he's, he'll be there. Um, some other special guests too. We have some wonderful musical guests like Ali Valines um, and so Aaron Rogers and then um, I, I asked a group of our artists to just film themselves doing whatever they wanted for about 20 to 30 seconds. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's the weirdest, weirdest <laughs> mixture of stuff. <laughs> I'm really happy about that. Um, oh, so a little burst of that. And then Jason, um, who is never quite the same show pony as I am, right? Oh. So. He's, he's okay. always more uncomfortable in these formats. Um, he yeah. is doing interviews. Um, we decided to have him interview some of the friends of the theater. So one of the interviews is with the former Rockets um, general manager, now um, with Billy, Daryl Morey, who is lovely and a huge theater fan. Wow. And, and, then, and produced Small Ball for small us. Small Ball, yeah. right, yep. right. yeah. yeah. And also with Candace, so we can talk more about the upcoming project. And uh, with Lisa Damore, who- Oh, uh, yeah. We who, saw uh, Airline Highway on Broadway, which yeah, was- Yeah. Yeah. We saw something of hers at your theater. Uh, Remind me title. The, the, uh, we did Annabella, oh. Annabella Ema, and we Annabella did Ema. Detroit. Yeah. And Detroit. Detroit. Oh, well, Detroit. We saw both of those, yeah. Yes, we did yeah. both of those. Yeah, Detroit was hers, too. That's right. She yeah. did an original show with our former company, Infernal Bridegroom, original play called Hyde Town as well. And so we're also- um, yeah. in the works with her of of commissioning oh good so yeah she's super so you're talented gonna, you're too. gonna yeah. interview those people jason on on the on, the on gala. your show on your gala yes yeah, so and they're, they're they're very impressive entertaining people but i really encourage you to skip those parts <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no no see it's easy all you have to do is say something like i said jason and then they'll say something funny like you just did <laughs> <laughs> or just, just watch it like that so you just cover my face yeah you say that. but um okay well i mean you know, so that's great and now we know how to watch that if i want to have the drama squad come to my house what do i do you can also visit our website catastrophictheater.com or org you know either one works there and you there you go and there's a link you can book it the performances are on saturdays and sundays in the day so we can okay. see 
We don't mm. bring portable lighting. Um, we have to, <laughs> I, I made it so that we didn't rely on any any actual power generated from the sites we go to. So everything has to be operated by batteries. <laughs> so. And I think you said this, but like if I wanted to have it at my house and I wanted to ask a hundred of my friends to come, could I do that? Oh, you cannot. Uh, how many? <laughs> it is limited to 10 people. Um, and then um, we also require that the audiences also wear masks for the duration of the performances uh, and the actors will too, all the performers And too. what is it, about an hour or hour, is it longer? About 35 or? minutes probably okay. of actual um, content. So it's a great little amount. I have to say as a performer, it has really been one of the most special and dear to me things mm -hmm. I've ever done. I think part of it, of course, we're all starving for entertainment yeah. and theater and to perform, right? But then, it's like this gift you're giving people. You're literally coming and they just walk out of their house and sit down and <laughs> just six feet away, there you are. The yeah. level of intimacy is, is I, I mean, I think some of my favorite shows were the ones we did for just three people. Aww. That was my question. So what's the <laughs> smallest? Is that the smallest? That, that was the smallest for us was two different ones. We had groups. Yeah. Of three. So it is huh. not a revenue generating concept. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that the, the 10 person cutoff is obviously it's a lot for health and safety, but with social distancing, that's also the only way that we can really have an intimate performance. Yeah. Sure. So this is sort of splitting the difference between intimacy and safe and healthy or no, health, health and safety. Right. I was just remembering several performances of plays that I've done in, you know, brick and mortar theaters where there were only three people in the audience. Oh, um, yeah. Us too. Yeah. This, is a way, yeah. this is a way, way better uh, situation. Yeah, we did a production with Infernal Bridegroom of, um, of Ball by Bertolt Brecht. And yeah. there was one performance, the play was like four hours long, okay? And there was one show where there were four people in the audience, but, they were German. So they loved oh. the thought of like theater as sort of like torture anyway. Like there's something like, you know, you have to work for your theater. So they were there with us the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. After the fifth act or whatever, when we, we bowed the cast of, you know, 20, like applauded for the, the for God, Germans. Poor people. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Oh, we've all had those, right? Where we were like, well, you're all where the whole cast is in the back going, can't we cancel it? There's less than there are in the cast. Can we yeah. cancel? And that's just a myth. You're not really supposed to, but you can kind of, you know. It's like that old college rule that if your professor is however many minutes late, it's yes, kind of that you're allowed to leave. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like it's not written down anywhere. It's not written anywhere, but yeah. we all believe it. It is hard though. And I mean, your, your theater size is around ours too, around 99 seat house. And it's just, it is frustrating to me that we can't sell out inside that circle that go to see theater. And then inside that circle is the group of people that come see like weird experimental theater. So, you know, I, I just wish that we could all, and it's, I know it's everyone's struggle. It's like the common struggle sure. that you know, all of us, no matter what type of theater we're producing of, of trying to get new life into those theater seats beyond. Well, you know, the other thing I wish we could figure out how to do, and I know, I think I've even had this conversation with Jason years ago about, we talked about how in, in, in Chicago, they had a, I don't remember what it was called, but they had like a club card where you could go get punches at different theaters. You bought a club card for like a hundred dollars and every month or every three months you could get, you could see 30 shows for that hundred dollars and those 20 theaters that belonged to that club card just split the money. And if you went to one, you know, to only four theaters out of the 20 theaters, that was fine. But what it did was it encouraged people to go to every theater. And I think one of the things in Houston, I find very strange, and you know, we don't do it, but that audiences, there's a certain small, tiny little piece of audience that goes to everything. But then most people will just go to like stages and they just go to stages. They just go to the alley. They just go to, maybe they just go to us. Maybe they just go to you. But you ask them about other theaters and you go, oh, well, where else do you go to the theater? And they're like, this is where I go to theater. And you're like, why? <laughs> if you love it, why don't you just go everywhere? Yeah, that's always a strange thing to me because in New York, I never even thought about the idea that I had loyalty to one theater. Mm -hmm. That never entered my mind. You know, I, of course, took classes and studied and always went to one, but I didn't think of it as this is where I have to go. I thought, oh, because my friends would come and go, oh my God, you have to go downtown to the Barrow Street. This is the, this show is happening. It's amazing. Or, you know, you have to go down to Cherry Lane, this amazing thing. And they talked about theaters. 
And the idea that there's not this sense of, you know, real desire in the audience base to really travel through the whole world of theater as much as I wish we could kind of make that catch fire somehow. Yeah. We try, I know we all exchange ads, we do things, but I don't know, it's a hard- I, th I think we do a little bit better between ourselves. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, the artists, yes. if there's buzz about a show, we try to make sure to go see it, yeah. all of us. Um, you know, we have we have work to do in Houston because uh, New York and Chicago people are very ready to go to a lot of theater. There's their theater towns. Um, Chicago has what like 200 theaters, I think, with yeah. all the storefront theaters, and New York probably has more. So um, Look, there's an anecdote. Was it you that was telling me where you got into a cab in Chicago or an Uber or something? And, uh, and the guy said, they went, what do you do? Oh, I'm in theater. Oh yeah, I, I love the theater. I just don't go a lot. You know, I'm like, oh, well, how often do you go? Yeah, I can only go like, I don't know, like, you know, twice a month or something. And it was just like, <laughs> and that's like- and he was, That was uh, Minneapolis. And he was like an old grizzled cabbie straight out of central casting. And you just don't yeah. even think he's going to know what you mean when you say you work in theater. You know, there's that story about Peter Hall um, getting into a cab in New York and, and being asked what you do. And he said, I'm a theater director. And the guy said, what do you mean, movies? And he said, no, uh, you know, like live plays. And the, the cabbie said, man, theater is dead. Uh, in New York City. <laughs> and then the flip side of that is this cabbie in Minneapolis, you know, that feels yeah. like he doesn't see enough because he only sees like 20 shows a year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A yeah it's That's a really great. interesting thing. You know, I think about it a lot. and. I think about how do you try to affect it? How do you try to change it? And sometimes I think I have great ideas and then sometimes I think, oh, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And <laughs> cause it's not something that's, it's so, it's so out in the, in the universe as a, as a, like a ethereal almost idea of how you make it catch fire in a general population. And when you have a population that's a sport population it's even harder because those, you know, they'll, that, that's what, if I see most people in Texas, I'll go, I, that's what I would expect. I would sit in a cab and go, so somebody says to me, so what did you do for a living? Oh, well, I used to be a cheerleader. Oh, wow. What team did you, were you a cheerleader for? Oh, just for a, a minor league baseball team. Oh, well, gosh, I wish I got to baseball. I only went to 20 games this year. You know, that's right. what I would expect in Houston. You know, as a well, wondering if you were actually a cheerleader once for a minor league baseball team. No, I was not. I was for, I was actually one of my first acting jobs was I was, <laughs> I lived in LA. Hey, hey, he was like, I played Honey, softball. I think you haven't told me. <laughs> yeah, that I did do that though. I played softball as an actor because of what I looked like, kind of like the League of Their Own thing, but mm -hmm. I was not very good. But it was all about you had to look like this. You had to wear the little skirt, the little tiny shorts. You had to do the thing. And you played in the Major League Baseball game. You played in the in between the two games as a softball player. And we weren't, I don't uh, think we were very good. I only had known you then. I only got $50 a game. So it was kind of like really being a cheerleader because they only I get like 50 bucks. Like we're off yeah. topic. We are, aren't we? Okay. That's okay. <laughs> That's not really any off topic. What's the topic? Exactly. Yeah, right? That's what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's about acting. That was acting, sort of. That was like I got paid. <laughs> well, so we covered how to get, how to, how to see uh, your gay, your gay, I never know whether to say gay. Gala, gala. Gay la gala. And, and we covered how to see, how to get the drama, drama squad. squad. And then, so, and Candace DeMeza's film isn't ready yet, right? It's not a, up yet. No, we just got it into the can and now we're in post. Um, Good. So I believe it will be um, most likely will be streaming in May. Yeah, is what we're looking at. So don't have the dates yet. And we can but. still see Greg Dean's Herzstruck. Yes, on, on YouTube. It's up on, on YouTube, YouTube. Yes. on our YouTube channel. Yeah, we'll see if we can get that in the chat. But no, let's see how many ways we can challenge your yeah. wonderful. There she is! Whoa, that was so fast. <laughs> how do you do that? You have 10 it's seconds. It's like a game You're show. Like, 10, nine. She is the best. She's Catherine good. Dunaway is her name, ladies yes, and gentlemen. She's Don't wonderful. Thank you, Catherine. So go to the chat and click all of those. Yes. Right. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Well, um, so so guys, I'm always curious. Um, you know, we've been through this whole uh, thing and we've devised different ways of dealing with it and performing and doing projects. Let's say, you know, it's coming, I think. Th there's going to be a day when we're going to be like, oh yeah, remember COVID? Um, and what is going to survive at catastrophic of, of the stuff that you've discovered during this time, do you think? 
What are you going to keep doing? What are you, yeah, what are you going to keep doing? I do think first that it really has sort of uh, made us sort of take another look back in and do a lot of reflection about maybe our goals for the future too and, and what yeah. really defines us. And um, it really seems that it comes down to the essence for us is the artists themselves and the art we make. Uh, we, you can get into this concept too of the whole idea of having your own big shiny building and feeling like that's what we all gotta be working towards, right? It's like a capital campaign, a capital campaign. And I think we, we've we gone back and forth with that very quite seriously. And um, it just for me personally, it sort of took it all back down to, you know, what do we really need to make art? And we just need the bodies and we need the words and and we can do it. And so, I mean, I still would like a set every now and then, but- um, Sure, sure. Yeah, but but I mean like- but We totally the, agree with that idea. Do you, see that the drum, do you see the drama squad continuing? I do think that we can absolutely do that. And because it is such a unique, you know- Yeah. Gift and, and experience. And so, yeah, and, and it, it's not, um, it's not, I mean, we pay the artists, mm -hmm. um, and but then the rest of the expenses are pretty minimal. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not building huge sets. It's got a real rough sort of Brechtian, let's do it in front of you kind of feel. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, folding chairs. And I think my cat just jumped into the sink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you need to there rest. Is. Oh, there she is. Hey. Hey. <laughs> cat is welcome. Yeah. In any case. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. Child to the rescue. Oh, well, <laughs> child dodging out of the picture. That's all good. That's all good. That's They're all welcome. All um, so the, yeah, the, um, the drama squad thing, I think we really want to continue, not just because it's been successful and because it's been neat to go to people's homes and bring theater to them, but also because uh, we're very focused on community outreach in a way that we hadn't been in the past. We're, I mean, we've always been concerned about it. We've always been interested in it, but now it's really a priority for us. And um, so getting out into the community and, and doing these kind of performances, ideally for larger audiences, ideally in, in parks and neighborhoods that aren't uh, having live theater troops show up and just start performing. Uh, more like pop-ups, maybe. Mm -hmm. I thought yeah. that was great. The other thing I thought that might be uh, an amazing way to use your uh, drama squad, if, you know, if it, I, I know my grandfather lived in one, and this is why I say this. My grandfather lived in a retirement community and mm. they had no real access and they would have loved something like that. Um, you know, and they'll, they'll pay you to come in. I know that. So it's not like, you know, they always have, they're looking for things. I mean, they had a magician come in, they had some stuff like that, but they would have loved a like variety show with they got a magician. And singing and you have a magician, <laughs> you're in, but um, that's a really, there's so many that's things. That's a great idea. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. love that and a lot of and, them can't get to a theater and so. i think also just having worked more with film now too um we've mm -hmm. always had some original pieces specifically that are more mixed media so um i really feel like we've seen what some of our filmmakers can do and i hope we do continue to collaborate that way and perhaps it will be more of a mix where it's presented with live theater as well but yeah. you know it's been, and never to replace a a, a live play but something to do on top of it because some of uh, the original work that some of the our core artists are bringing to us are, are imagined for film. And, uh, like the one that Greg did, he's been thinking about for 10 years as a film and we were finally an outlet to, uh, to be able to produce it. Yeah, we had an audience question. It's in the chat that, that they, they say about Drama Squad. What if neighbors start watching from the street? Is that okay? Does that <laughs> it, happen? Is, it is okay. Um, Love it. They, they can't necessarily come walk into the yard and pull up a chair because, you know, you'll violate the amount of people, but they'll be distanced certainly from us. And um, we, we had some great ones like that. We were doing it one time in this duplex yard and it was um, sort of behind the West Gray service center where everybody goes and votes, right? Um, yeah. And so there's, there's a park back there and there's tennis courts, there's tons of activities, people walking and all over the place. And this one guy, as we were setting up, was on his bike and he was like, hey, have you started? And we assumed it was like a guest, but he wasn't, it was just a guy on his bike. And he stopped and he watched the whole show All right. and, and like filmed part of it and was just like, that is so cool, thanks guys. And just rode away. Oh, that's <laughs> so, funny. Yeah. Well, I think that's, you know, hey, it's free word of mouth, right? 
know, you know, I saw this thing on the street, you guys, it was great. You know, I mean, I did did this play with um, um, Horsehead Theater. Um, Mm -hmm. Everything's either about 10 years or 50 years ago. So it was sometime in my past. (laughs) And we did it at this bar downtown, the the Brew tap the, the brewery tap the brewery was that what it was called uh, it was like underground kind of right yeah, yeah. well it was it a, was it among the thugs among the among thugs the, right? it was no. under the bar the same spot but the bar is on up top and the the that, that place underneath that was a where club. stages used to be years ago yeah. with it, it's that it's right there though but the point doesn't matter but the point is we 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 did this thing you know we did this play it was a play that took place in a bar so we did it in the bar but there were these regulars who would not leave. And at first <laughs> it was kind of like, it was kind of like a contest about who was gonna have the space. And like, could they be loud enough to like <laughs> get us the fuck out of there? But after they watched the play a couple of times, they started watching every night. And we did it tw- a dozen times, 16 yeah. times or something, you know, regular run. And then about halfway through the run, What's, what started to happen is afterwards they'd come up and go, hey, I noticed that you uh, you dropped a line in the second <laughs> uh, I was wondering what happened. Or there. like, why didn't he come in? Why didn't he come in <laughs> when he was supposed to come in? Totally involved. And it was, it was um, a unique experience for me and, and one that's very dear to my heart. So it was yeah, really great. Something about that. Um, in a way, you just described our first five years. Yeah. <laughs> because we were at punk clubs uh you know and there were punks there and they were they were there to drink and and see yeah. music hear music uh warehouses and uh oh yeah you know. we had some we we were doing a commerce street arts warehouse where they had people living there that so in their their lofts that surrounded the actual performance space and some of the people were were they were pissed off that like there was a play every night and um, and that they weren't allowed to that they had yeah. to take a special path to get to their place. They just felt like I live here. I shouldn't have to do this kind of atomic cafe. Also, we had some of that with the, with the residents. Yeah. Um, we didn't have so much trouble like that with Camino Real, which we did at the um, old abandoned uh, Westbury Square, um, you know, with the fountain right in the middle, which you need. And it was just there. And it was I, I kept saying. We, we need a space that's exactly like Westbury Square. We couldn't find one. And so we went to Westbury Square. <laughs> but it, it was one of a few outdoor things that we did. And it, but they were none of them were in a theater. Uh, in 1998, I think, which we were five years old at that point, um, we got a call from Diverse Works, who had um, seen Wojcik, or Wojcik outdoors uh, like three or four times. And Loris Bradley, who was the director of performance then, and called and said, would you be interested in making new work with us? And I said, to be performed at Diverse Works? And she said, yeah. And I was, it was like Hollywood was calling. You know, yeah. they, they had a grid, they had lights, they had chairs. We always had to bring all that stuff. <laughs> it was a real shock. And I think about now when we complain, you know, about, or someone, you know, just some of the things that we now expect yeah. that were just such luxuries to us then, just a roof, you know, and, and air conditioning. I mean, we were doing, Jason did force us to do Jungle of Cities um, in a tin warehouse in July. You know, <laughs> like fur coats and it's like, it was a winter in Chicago, you know. <laughs> they, they keep saying Chicago is a cold place. And then Everett Evans wrote a review, but the headline was great. Uh, <laughs> IBP's jungle, too hot for this city. It just sounded like, you know, oh. this is making some production, right? And then he goes into the thing and he says, I, I left after the second act rather than get heat stroke. You know, it was. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to like play out this part of like somebody in the cast going, hey, hey, Tamarie's passed out in the back. Do we drag her out on stage or do we just go on without her? <laughs> we did some in such bitter cold. I remember rehearsing yeah. Story Orchard and there was a stray cat in this um, warehouse and everyone was taking turns holding the cat for warmth <laughs> inside their coat. You, like you get in trouble. Like, no, it's my turn. Give me the cat. I think we had some warmed up potatoes actually. That, and that was at the Ionesco one act. Yeah, the, attack, yeah. act and the future is an eggs. We passed out warm potatoes to the audience because there was no heat. Oh my God. <laughs> 
when, oh. you, when you started out, I guess in 1993, what, mm -hmm. I mean, did you want, did you kind of want to give yourself problems like that? Or, or were, was it just, you didn't have any, any, any place to do it or no money to do it. So you just, so there were problems like that. Or was it both or what, I mean, what, what was your, what did you want back then? You want me to answer, Tamara? Yeah, you, to... you answer. I want you both to answer. Um, we weren't looking to do traditional theater. <clears throat> uh, my feeling was I had studied theater, I had studied playwriting, um, I studied acting in high school, studied playwriting in, in, in college. Um, <clears throat> and I, I was not seeing any theater that really spoke to me um, or, or to my um, uh, generation. And certainly none of my friends that weren't theater people. And so we really wanted to make theater for people who didn't go see theater. We were trying to turn on people who, you know, were otherwise on bar stools or, or seeing bands or things like that. It was much easier when we were of that age and, and we were in the bars every night uh, to, and we were full all the time then. Um, we weren't even uh, mostly casting actors um, because we felt like, uh, I felt like there was a, a sort of a veneer to actors that wasn't <clears throat> entirely authentic, the way that it was um, when we would go see a band. You know, we go see a punk band, there's so much abandon that, that you can't help but be dropped in. Uh, there was a, <clears throat> a band that our friend Matt Kelly fronted, and for the longest time, I insisted that our actors go and see him perform, just to see what it was, to let go of everything, to be absolutely dropped in. It didn't take me very long to decide no, no, I want to work with actors. <laughs> you know, um, for one thing, uh, the, the musicians weren't, I mean, they were all performers of some sort, uh, but they, they get better gigs, they, they were hung over, whatever it was, you know, and we realized, well, theater is important to theater people. They're, they're going to show up and do the thing. And, and it made for better productions, obviously. I mean, I was just being a stupid punk, not wanting to <laughs> work with actors for the first show or two. Um, why did we perform in such rudimentary circumstances? Um, now, wait a minute. You said that. I did not say that. Well, <laughs> didn't you ask, like, why yeah, were we... I would, that, and I'm, just, I'm just rudimentary. I, yeah, I mean, I was just curious, like, you know, was that part of the, the, was that part of the plan? I want, you know, I want to do something in a, in a non-traditional space no. with was it money? nothing. Was it we were not working as... access or was it because you wanted, that's what spoke to the work you wanted yeah. to do? We were working as bartenders in a punk rock club together. Called, yeah. It was an axiom that was at that time called Katalyuk. Um, and Jason got it in his, he got, had come back and said, I want to do this play I wrote. I want to I want to do this play. Mm -hmm. And that's how it first started. And so because we spent so much time in these bars and clubs and warehouses, it just became the obvious place we could do it. Like, hey, can we do a show in your bar? Fuck yeah! Ooh, I guessed it. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. Sorry. He good. did it already. Okay, but um, <laughs> but you know, and so that's that's really uh, yeah. I mean, at the time, the thought of like being organized, we didn't have a board for those first couple of years. Sure, we didn't, sure. We didn't no. know how you were supposed to do it. We weren't even nonprofit for our first three years. It was yeah, all sure. just like, and we operated in the black. But it was it was all just ticket sales and yeah. um and, and volunteer work and and volunteer labor and all that kind of yeah. stuff. That's what I, I think he's trying to get at is just that you just did what was in front of you and what you knew and what you found and what, and I think that's how all people start. And that's how most people learn and they grow and they find audience and they find their voice and they develop what they are. And you've stayed true to what you are. You've just brought it into full, full force as a, as a powerful entity that now has a space and a name and a reputation and a voice all its own in, a, in this city. It you just know, I, grew I mean, to what from, it is. From what I can tell, most of the theaters that start anyway, that they'll start small and most of them are started by artists. And, mm -hmm. and mo I, I certainly, Kim knew more about producing than I did when we started um, what became Fourth Wall, but I hadn't studied it, you know? I, I didn't, ticket sales, board, uh, you know, all that stuff I didn't know anything about, or care about. Uh, yeah, and we had to learn it and, you know, get good at some things and try to do better with others. But uh, it feels to me that that's like there, if there's a theater that was started by somebody who went to college to study production, I don't know what it is. Well, that, that happens <clears throat> all too often, I think. Um, 
people yeah, seek funding, they start a board, they secure a space, and then they start thinking about who they're going to be. And they make their first production. Right. You know, I mean, I know that you guys didn't start that way. And, and I think any no successful theater has started that way. But it well, happens. So. It's pretty common. I think you're right, Jason. I, I knew right. I knew theater companies in New York that started as a corporation. And right. then they are, they're cold. They have no imagination. They are just trying to make money. So they are doing carousel for the 6,000th time. They're doing you know, barefoot in the park or whatever hey, they hey, barefoot. Okay, I'm sorry, careful. these are beautiful plays. plays, but you know, they're, they're, I don't want to do them again, right? I'm like, you no, know, I think... and I, we do plays that are published, not to be saying that that's not okay to do published plays. I, I believe in doing published plays that have a particular voice in a particular environment, particular political time and with audience, with cast members and audiences that need to have a particular story told. But yeah, but if you don't understand that you're doing it, like you guys said, you have a particular belief in artistry and in, and especially the kind of stories you tell when you are about creating new stories. And then the stories you tell that aren't new are basically a reflection of a still a new voice or a new idea. At least that's what I see when yeah. I come. And so I go, oh, this still feels new to me, even if this particular but play is not new and artistic artistically it's... It's artistically yeah. and aesthetically driven. I don't understand why anyone would want to start a theater for any other reason. I mean, it's it's so much work. Yeah. I'm kidding. I mean, you're not going into it for the money. No, no, you're not. <laughs> well, I was okay. lucky too that we we. I mean, first off, we have each other. Yeah. Um, we met in high school. We were yeah. uh, dating each other's best friends, and um, then from that point on, just like. We worked on the Jerry Brown campaign in 1992 together, and then again, punk rock. We were the heads of it because we called the toll free number that was out everywhere. Everybody was making fun of him for having a toll free number. And then as soon as you knew it, everybody had a toll free number. But we called the toll free number and said, How do we volunteer? And they said, There's no office in Houston, start one. So we, we wow. did for an office, and that kind of sidetracked us for a year from doing theater. Um, yeah. We were very into that. And, and he came and stayed at my place. He slept on a food on the floor. It's amazing. Yeah. We, we could do it. We should do a whole interview about that. You should. Oh my God. <laughs> you should write a show about it's that. Yeah. We crazy liberal political junkies too. Um, but so we've always, obviously we're like brother and sister and we've yeah. been each other's loves this long. So it's great to have someone that, you know we get to do this with, but we've also had certain artists and people that have been with us now for 25 years. And that, that have continued to work with us. And there've been other waves of people that have come and, come and gone. And we've seen some really wonderful young talented people then go off to LA or go off sure. to you know, trying of to make course. the dream happen, you know. And, um, yeah. and some but, will even come back, you know, and wind up like Amy Bruce, she went off to, to grad school. Uh, Jeannie Harris did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And some come back. And then some people you also see where they do just sort of, they burn out, you know, from, from acting, they want to do something different. Or I love thinking of someone like George Parker, who is a great filmmaker, but also a great actor. And at one point, he'd been acting with Infernal Program, and he was just like, "Yeah, I just don't want to act anymore." And we're like, "Well, but you're like this amazing talent. You just—it's so natural. You don't—it just comes out of you." So you're good. Yeah, I just want to. I'm gonna do film instead. He went to film school. Now he teaches film. He makes films. It's a film production company. And then he, you know, years later, was like, "Yeah, I'll act again." So now we get to have a mat too, but um, yeah, just seeing the journeys that different artists with us have made. Yeah. I think if, that's if, pretty If you don't know him, he, uh, he played Behringer, the lead in Rhinoceros. He also played yeah. Tom Payne. When did and wasn't he, he was in Jim Lair? Uh, no, he was no, in Detroit uh, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah, we know him. That's right. Yeah. I was thinking, right. yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, so that's kind of, it's fun to hear uh, these stories from from when you started because I wasn't I wasn't I, I wasn't in Houston then I think you weren't either right well I was left, at U of H right? I left in ninety three I yeah, left so right started. when you were getting started that's when we started yeah. yeah 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 and when I first came to Houston I wasn't I was living in College Station and I so I wasn't seeing any other theater I was just driving in to do theater and yeah you know. Mm -hmm. There, there are these these productions that IBP back when you were that did that I, the the first I always I'm not I'm I'm very unsure of how to pronounce Brian Yuka or Juka yeah, Juka yeah that the one of our airplanes is missing is that the title? we have some planes we have yeah some. we have some planes did you see that 
I didn't. It's the it's the, uh, the production that like everybody in town talks about. Uh, that you know that I've heard it. I feel like I've seen it. I've heard it described. <laughs> you know, I, I'm like one of those people. I could pretend like I was at the game when Hank Aaron hit his 715th <laughs> home run. I just pretend that I was at. It was um, Brian. Um, you know, he is like a conductor. He uses he, find, he uses found material. It's devised work. And That's he, good yeah, he Good was point. in um, Ann Bogart's company when she developed viewpoints. Like, so he goes back, everyone puts it on their resume that they, you know, they can teach or study viewpoints, but it's like diluted by a thousand or something. And, and he's like, and, oh, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but, but also Brian started a new company with Ann Bogart. Right. And they were together for a while, just the two of them running this company. And eventually she had to say, you need to take it over. Yeah. 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 Um, so he came to us through Diverse Works again, through Loris Bradley. And we created first a show with him called Last Rites. Um, and then the show that you're speaking of um, was We Have Some Planes. And he, we had already commissioned him to come do a second piece with us because as a performer, again, it's just the wildest thing. You have no idea what the final product is going to look like because he's this master puzzle maker of all these different components that are generated out of viewpoints work um, with found text. and a lot of pop culture references too. Um, and so he, I think was originally gonna be a completely different theme, but he lives in New York. He's mm. a native New Yorker and he had been there right when 9-11 happened. And so he came to make a show with us just months after. Mm. And it, it absolutely informed what the piece would be about. And um, so we got a lot of attention for that. I think like American Theater Magazine and, and different things because it was one of the first pieces that came out of 9-11 and, and reflected on it. Um, and then he stopped doing theater. At all, yeah. Not, he, after that, he did some freelance gigs around the country directing. Oh, but, he directed Bat Boy at Stages. Yeah, which that was, was a bad of, marriage, man. It was a really <laughs> weird mixture of taking him yeah. so, you know, he's so experimental and I don't know, anyway, so. Um, he stopped actually, he had just things, personal life, family things. And he just said, I'm not gonna do it anymore. And Jason, thank God, kept calling him like every year and being like, you wanna come make a show? You wanna come make a show? And luckily just a couple of years back, he said, you know what? I'm ready to come back. And we did Toast, which was yeah. the last devised piece. Oh, there we go again. There's oh, the how are you doing that? <laughs> any, any photo from that play that doesn't have a flamingo in it. <laughs> yeah, right. Now she thinks she's not having the flamingo. I loved that that piece. Um, yeah, and, yeah. So um, again, I'm not. I'm spoiling, but we are also working with him for next season. Oh, that's Fantastic. so great. Yeah, to bring him back. He's decided that we're his company. He's he's been telling us like, imagine I live in Houston now. Please hire oh. me as often as as you. Yeah, oh, that's so that's good. Great. That's great. And the the person who lit that the who lit toast is his partner. Um, she's Roma Flowers. She actually teaches at oh, is SMU it, or TCU. Uh, okay, which one? Dallas. Yeah, close okay. to Dallas. Um. Anyway, she's an amazing lighting designer and she works all around the country too. But um, they met together many years ago. And so he does reach out to her always to see if she'll do it because they have that thing. They have that shorthand between them. Yeah, that, so yeah. That, cause that, yeah, that work was stunning. And um, there was other design work in it that was stunning too, but I, just, I remember the lighting specifically. Um, as so the, do <laughs> I don't think Brian would do a show without Roma. And, and yeah. I don't think we'd even, I mean, of course, yeah, we always we're, always, that, but... we're always working to figure out the dates based on both of their availability. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Well, I well, if 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 I, if there's any way that I could be like in the back row as a director, learning and watching, I would love to just be quiet and watch him. Yeah. Because I'm I'm always, you know me, I'm all about learning. All I ever want to do is learn, and all I ever want to do is get better, and. So maybe when he's here, if I could like be a fly in the wall a couple nights in the back, and if if that's okay, I don't know how he feels it's about really interesting for also some of our just like some of our friends and some of our supporters to be able to see like just one little snippet of how he takes how he develops some material. Yeah, so, I mean, and and then to go later and see the final piece and to recognize how that was 
put into the final piece. You know, that yeah. that's, that that would be a really. I, it would just thought. be great. I mean, because all of us, I feel like, at least for me, I'm like, I'm always wanting to go. Gosh, how do how do other things happen that I haven't explored in my own imagination or my own abilities and stretched myself to a certain place and somebody like that just amazing to just watch and just sit and be quiet and be a fly on the wall and, and just try to absorb some of that that creativity and that genius and how somebody thinks that doesn't think like you because you know that's the key you know how do I learn more and that's the key to life right learn how other people think and other people live when if you can just be quiet and watch and listen sometimes you know and that would it's be really so neat. funny too like we'll be in the process <laughs> He'll have you do something for, you know, I don't know, two minutes, 15 minutes, whatever. And then he'll walk around and individually come to different people and be like, okay, um, what you did, you know, can we try that, you know, upside down and backwards next time? Or let's do that, but let's pair these. And then, and then there'll be the unfortunate time where they, he comes up and he goes, so. Uh oh, yeah. You just didn't have any ideas then, did you? <laughs> or, like, or he's like, don't yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> it has been really really um exciting to me to be in the back row uh yeah. learning during the during the first two productions especially i i wasn't yeah. as uh available i wasn't as well during the oh during the sure show. sure yeah. you, well you've teased a, a candace de a film you've teased a candace de Meza, um future play. play yeah to... you've teased a brian yuka production is there anything else you'd like to tease but getting it all out of us tonight. So. <laughs> doing my best. That's our job. <laughs> we won't have anything left for a season announcement. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, although, you know, like everybody, we're planning several seasons. And yeah, there's I'm really no way around that. September start, November start, January start. Like, w when I do we you. actually get into the theater? You know? yeah. Right, right. Yeah, we're in the same. We're the same. Right, we, we had started September. Now we're like, well, we usually only do one show in the um, oh, fall yeah. now. We don't do Christmas anymore. We're like, let's skip Christmas. Let everybody else have Christmas. And we just do. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to try October and then shoot everything in the spring. So hopefully at the very least, if we had to not do the spring, uh, the fall, yeah. spring has to be okay. I mean, everybody should be inoculated. We should have some kind of herd keep community. Thinking. I mean, it's, it's sounding better and better. I know that I read an article today that Broadway's in full preparation for opening. So that's all good signs to us, unless it crashes, unless it turns into a disaster. That would be, you know, but let's, I'm, I'm going on the positive. We've all done good work. We've worked hard to try to have stuff available and be good citizens as artists. So I'm hoping we're all gonna get our good karma back. That's what I'm going with. There's certainly going to be a time when we're able to go back into a theater, um, but we have to all expect, I think, that we're going to have limited capacity, and so uh, to begin with, um, mm -hmm. to, to be safe. And the, the larger theaters in town um, are considering 30% capacity. Well, if we're 30% capacity, nobody's there, you know. Yeah. And there's, there's really um, not a lot of room to space them out, you know? So I, I think we're all in different situations so that way. And I think you guys are similar to us in that too. You yeah. take nine yeah. divided by, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, to me, yeah. you know, if we can't do 50%, what are we doing? And 50% is still hard, um, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, and I would hope, this is my hope, and if there's anybody out there that's gonna watch this later, or listen to this now, if the small theaters have to do limited capacity, I hope the foundations step up and underwrite our losses. Um, because we can't afford to produce if we don't have the ability to be full because you know they don't re realize that extending to have more time for audience costs more money to extend. So, you know, the, the, the fiscal model when you have less audience is not very attractive for theaters. That's a lot of why people don't entertain the idea of going into the building. It's right. about financial loss. So I hope foundations go, well, let's help them. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. anyway. Guys, we, we're, we've talked for almost an hour and it's been delightful. Do you have anything that that you were hoping we would ask you or anything you want to say that we've been, and I, I can ask you some more questions, but if there's something on your mind, now's the time. I think you've given us a great opportunity to share all of our stuff. Thank you so oh, yeah. much. Good. It's just been fun to talk and tell the old war stories, right? 
So. Oh, it's great to have heard a lot of that early stuff because you know both of us were gone for part of that. So it was really nice to hear how you came together and what your early days were like. So That's I wanted to, to the, then I'm gonna ask you, what, what was, what's the first play or musical you ever saw that, that made an impression on you and why? Um, I think it was Fiddler on the Roof when I was 10 years old, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I remember seeing that in Austin and being just like, I mean, besides that, it would be all the old movie musicals because I that was what I really cut my teeth on. All the Gene Kelly and the Fred Astaire and, and then all the old like Philadelphia story, those type of 1930s screwball comedies. So that's that was really my intro into like the idea of performance and then top it with the live musicals. <laughs> So your, did your, was it your, your family took you to Fiddler on the Roof or how did that yeah, happen? My mom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's so I was cool. um, also just super into musical comedies, which um, you can probably see in my work. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and in high school, I never, I was such a bad actor. <clears throat> I never got a part because I'm shy. I couldn't drop in. And uh, I never got a part except in musicals at the Jewish Community Center. So my relationship to the Fiddler on the, to Fiddler on the Roof is that I played Perchik. And it was probably my greatest triumph as an actor, except for the song, which they usually cut, but they made me sing anyway. And I'm tone deaf. I can't sing at all. Oh, I bet you were charming. I bet you were very sweet, shy and charming and just did a beautiful job. Is Perchik the Russian <laughs> yeah. soldier? Yeah, the rebel. He's yeah. <laughs> the rebel. The, the, rebel. Rebel. the shy, rebel. sweet rebel. <laughs> I'm oh. sure you were charming. God, Fiddler on the Roof. Yeah, the, both of the... you. Look at that. You were you know, it... together. It's our Jewish sorry, it... heritage on both of us. Coming yeah, together. yeah. It's the first time I've and last that I've ever been asked for an autograph. I was at a McDonald's like a mile away from the JCC, like three years after I did that play. Awesome. And this family very nervously approached me and one of them said, I'm sorry, were you in Fiddler on the Roof? And I said, oh yeah, yeah, I was. Um, that's really nice that you remember. I hope you enjoyed it. And they pulled out a napkin and said, could you sign this for us? And I don't <laughs> think I've been asked to do that ever since. It was very wonderful. You know, awesome. and uh, if you're watching this, please ask me for my autograph. <laughs> waiting since I was like 19 years old. <laughs> there are going to be so many people. People are going to come up to you at, at shows, shows and go, now. "Can I have your autograph?" Are you, are you, yeah, you need your autograph, man. <laughs> you're going to be like, "Oh, please stop asking me for my autograph." <laughs> that's going to take a while. Yeah, yeah that's right. A that's lovely audience a lot. member, Veronica. Uh, um, who who watches like everything we do and is <laughs> everybody all over she's Facebook. a huge I think she supporter of everybody yeah she's she just loved the interview oh Thank yeah you so much for being here and um, Brian Broom had a uh, talked uh, told how much he loved Blue Finger and everything you know Brian goes to everything Brian's a great theater supporter he is he is yes, he's yeah. wonderful um, but I guess we're going to wrap up and, and say good night to you guys and thank you for being with us and thank you for giving us your time yeah, it means a lot to really us we know how busy it. you are. So. Hey, thanks so much for doing this, you guys. Not just for us. I mean, thanks for doing this for the entire community. It's really oh. special. Well, well, we are so happy to do it. Good. Yeah, everybody, go go to the gala. Go. Go to the Get the Drama Squad. The, the links are still in the yeah. chat. And, um, and um, remember, the gala is free, you guys. So yeah. you have no excuse not to check it out. Get on there. Buy and, a raffle ticket yeah. or something on there to support those guys and help them do Drama Squad. All there right. you go. All donate right. by God. That's right. Donate to everybody. All right. Well, we're going to say goodbye to Tamara and yeah. Jason. So they're going to drop off we're gonna and we're going to hang on for a minute. And thank you guys. We're Good talking on top of each other because we're married. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. So, everybody, we wanted to just fill you in real quick before we drop off. Um, we are having our guest in two weeks from tonight is the wonderful David Rainey, alley actor, uh, artistic director of the Landing Theater Company. He's going to join us, talk all about what he's doing, what's going on. He's also I know. a Juilliard grad. He was there he in is. his fourth year when I was in my first. He was a hero of mine. That's right. Still is. I know that right now the alley has a uh, streaming version of Enemy of the People that um, David is in. So you might want to go over to the alley and check that out if you want to try to catch that. I think Dude. it's even free. So it might be free or I think it's got pay options, but go check it out. David was in the first ever um, fourth wall stark naked production. Yes, he was. Deck collectors. Well, really four actors in it because yeah. Caleb Martinez was in it too. But, yes. 
yeah. And so, we've, okay, I have one more thing I need to talk to you guys about that's very, very exciting. We have announced today, this morning, early in the morning, we have a project opening up, uh, which is going to run April 22nd through May 2nd, which is a Zoom, so a virtual production of White Rabbit, Red Rabbit. Uh, it's on Zoom platform. For those of you who don't know what that play is, it is a one person show that the actors have never seen the script. It's opened before your eyes on the Zoom platform the night you join whichever actor of your choice of these nine actors that you choose. And yes, that is right. You are seeing Laura Linney on that screen as one of the actors from Philip Lale's Juilliard Group number 19. It is a reunion of the Juilliard Group 19. All these beautiful actors you see in this picture are from his class, including John Grimion, who is a Houstonian also, who you would have seen in God of Carnage at Fourth Wall Theater Company. So, so it makes me really happy that this is happening. It wasn't planned this way. I contacted my entire class by email and said, hey, anybody want to do this? And uh, uh, all eight of those people responded. And so we're, we made it an all Juilliard thing. It's, it's just going to be so great, you it guys. Makes me so happy. It's going to be amazing. Oh, look, and John hey, Grimion's right there. there. Yay, John, Grimion. John, you can see John in that show. Hey. So don't miss that. And I, those tickets are going to go fast. They're already selling today. So make sure you jump on there, grab the artist of your choice, or see it two or three times. You don't have to just see it once. It because nine times. Nine it's times. going to be different every time. Each time that person takes that script out of there, and who knows what's going to happen. We don't know anything about it. We don't know how it's going to be. So when you look at it and you see it, it's going to be different because it's a different person. It's not like coming and seeing me and old boring Philip doing the same play then that same night every time, right? Different person. All right, we're very excited about that. And then <laughs> just cut us you down like we stink. This show I know, I'm yourself. hurrying. There's one other thing I'm supposed to say, Catherine, what am I supposed to say? Is there a screen for me to say it or am I done? Am I wrapping up? I think I might be wrapping up. Oh, there's a trailer for White Rabbit, Red Rabbit that we're gonna leave you with. So you might wanna watch it, it's one minute long. Just a little summary of what I've kind of said right there. So that's gonna be it for us. And uh, we'll say good night. And here's a little trailer on White Rabbit, Red Thank Rabbit. Thank you, Catherine and Dunaway. And we'll see you on the 8th. Beyond the Fourth Wall is produced by Fourth Wall Theatre Company, Houston's home for extraordinary performances up close. Each guest is paid for their appearance on this series in accordance with our mission to pay artists a living wage. Follow the links in the video description to support Fourth Wall with a tax-deductible gift or to subscribe to our upcoming 10th anniversary season. I'm just, it's just those cats, and that's what I like about it. We're all just hanging out. It is. It's just hanging out, too, and showing that, and, and I think it's important what we like.